Please subscribe, like, and share. Hello, good morning, good day, good evening from whatever part of the world you're watching from. Thank you for cutting in or coming in and uh, watching my channel. Today we'll talk about timing chain. I get a lot of questions about dealing with them from gear drives to belt drives to what kind of timing chain to use. Anyway, we will touch bases on this and hopefully uh, you, you guys find this very interesting and informative. Let's get it going. Okay, let's start talking about the types of timing chain. Roller, belt drive, or gear drive. I will try to make it as clear as possible which is the best alternative for your project at hand or what you're planning for. First off, We'll start with the roller timing chain. Years ago, <clears throat> a lot of these uh, timing chain that comes from the factory are made out of plastic. Even though I've never really seen them jump, but I've heard, in fact, they, the factory did this for so-called quietness. Because when you have a stock engine and you can hear every little noise and there are picky people out there, <laughs> they can hear every squeak and rattle in the car. The manufacturer doesn't want to have any issue as far as engine noise or harmonics or anything like that. No. <clears throat> they did a nylon coated or nylon gear for the timing chain. And they don't last very long and they start to stretch almost from the get go. Especially when you're hot dogging around and like a lot of you. Okay, so uh, in fact, a little short story. Uh, years ago, my Cougar, a 68 that I had since 1979, I was headed to Vegas, and then the doggone thing quit. <laughs> it won't start. I go, what? What's going on? So, one thing you can do to check, and there's a good um, uh, information for a lot of people, it just cut out when I headed to Vegas. And then I was going, what's going on? And I have one of those distributor with the Petronics. It looks like a stock distributor, but it's got an electronic ignition. Uh, module and everything in there and I cranked it and the rotor stayed where it's at. I go, oh, okay, that this doggone thing, uh, either the, probably the distributor gear broke or like I said, the timing chain. So when we got it home, we took it apart. Oh, wow, this is what, uh, eight years ago or ten years ago? It had the original <laughs> nylon gear in it. So that engine's original in it. I bought it from a divorce sale <laughs> of all places. I only paid 700 bucks for this XR7 Cougar. Anyway, that said, now the factory don't use any kind of uh, plastic gear or nylon gear, whatever they call that thing. That was a bad idea. I never really 
heard any noise from whatever engine, stock or otherwise, from the timing gear or timing chain. I don't hear it. I never heard it. Let's fast forward. You guys building LS engines and you put camshaft in there? Use a good chain. If you think the, the plastic gears are bad, have you seen the LS chains? Horrible. Thin. They won't even drive a bicycle. <laughs> it's so thin. I'm looking at that and I go, oh my God. My lightweight 10 speed don't even have uh, the, you know, I mean, it's a lot wider my bicycle chain than the LS. So for you guys, don't don't run that. Run after my or a thicker one. Okay? If you're gonna do any kind of serious revving, just to save yourself any headaches later on. Now, timing chain. There are different kinds on the uh, chain itself. There's the roller type and the non roller version. These things don't last very long. I mean, I've used a lot of them out there. Different companies, I will, well, you guys know that. I don't have to name names. But they all stretch. That's the problem. Okay? No matter your intent of building the best timing chain out there, after a bunch of runs, or even 15, you know, 20,000 miles of high-performance driving or racing, when you take it out, if something happens, the chain has a lot of movement. And you can see that already as evident. And sometimes when you, you use your timing light, you see that things is bouncing up and down. If your shaft end play is close to, to perfect or minimum, you'll see that thing bouncing up and down. That's your chain, you know, uh, slacking, uh, releasing and under tension or coasting and your timing pointers will will be bouncing all over the place. Depends on the severity of the chain stretch, you'll see the variation is very obvious. Let me just say about all these high performance timing chain. They're mostly good, but avoid the ones that come from overseas and comes in a white <laughs> white box. That gives me the creeps, okay? Anytime you see a white box, it's probably made in, you know, the, the balloon country, flying balloons all over the, our, <laughs> the United States lately. They're not good guys, and they're not very good either. They would stretch. And if preferably you buy the billet type, it is great. You know, billet uh, gears in it, and just the chain you can replace you can just buy this. Don't even buy the whole set. Buy a replacement chain if you're in the process of doing these. Now, one thing. Timing chains that are... You, you could... Okay, let me, let me go back here. You can see the chains right here. Let me... In between the links. You can tell a good quality one because you can roll the links and you can feel that's a true roller timing chain okay and the other ones just have the shaft and uh, things in there and they don't they're the inferior type okay it's best to buy a quality one from the US manufacturers some from Australia now on gear um, types adjustability I would stay away from the ones that are let me see again I've come across somewhere the adjustment is over here where you can turn the the cam pin it's got a little eccentric and then you lock it down uh, I am really really not too happy with those kinds I prefer that the adjustability comes from the bottom gear okay and this one here has got three ways here and I think it's two four advanced straight up four retarded and four advanced I prefer that better I stay away from adjustable 
top sprocket. I uh, want well, it here's less movement. You don't have to lock anything in there. Uh, it sits on the keyway. There's no way that would fail on you. That if you think just because you said at zero, it is zero. There are variations in machining tolerance, accuracy, even on the camshaft. Just make sure that you degree it so that you know what you really have. Therefore, I would always use a double roller chain, no matter what. Spend the money and make sure it's a true roller, just to steer clear of that uh, overseas junk that's going around, uh, sold all over the place for discounted price. It's not worth it, especially got money tied up in your engine and then you put in a cheap overseas made in uh, balloon country <laughs> timing chain okay is there any negative to using a uh, timing chain of course like i said earlier chain stretch they will all stretch some stretch prematurely i guess it depends on how hard you run your your engine some stay lo for a long time okay but they all stretch is that a negative well if you sit if this the stretch isn't successive or even if it's a brand new set not all timing chains are bad because there's one um, should we say as a matter of fact a timing chain aids in power how does it aid in power? Well, at high RPM. If a camshaft actually retards a bit, it hangs the intake valve slightly longer. All right, a couple of degrees depends on the, the stretch of the chain. Uh, actually, stretching gains power. <laughs> Hard to believe, but think about it. If the camshaft is retarded because of chain stretch, your power is going to get, well, there's going to be a dividend, a power dividend. Because like I said, the, the, the intake valve hangs open a little bit longer. That's like VTEC by stretch. <laughs> okay, so uh, we will touch bases on the other uh, drive systems that doesn't have that capability which is uh, stretching by VTEC or VTEC by stretch. <laughs> so, excuse me. So really, at high RPM, when you decree, you uh, retard the camshaft a little bit, you actually see a little bit of power. The power will come up. Okay, so it's not really all that bad. You will not get that with the other system that we're going to be touching bases on right now. Other benefits of a timing chain. Well, a timing chain is really a, um, a dampener. Remember, the power pulse on an engine, if you, let's take a, 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 a look at here. An engine turning 8,000 RPM. I'm not good at math, okay. An engine turning 8,000 RPM, half of that, 4,000, are ignition pulses or ignition sequencing or, or firing of the, the cylinders. 8,000 RPM, 4,000 of those, okay, are ignition pulses. Now you divide 4,000 by 60 for a minute. You come up to, I think, 66? Uh, well, anyway, 66, that's 66 pulses on that crack, all right? And it's hitting everything there and the chain actually right here you know when it's turning like that the chain absorbs a lot of the firing pulses to the benefit of the rest of the valve train all that stretch and pulses is actually acting on the chain it's like a shock absorber a natural shock absorber so it's not really a negative 
you get the retard on the camshaft and also the power pulses, the hammer-like blows, especially when you're you got pre-ignition, you know, detonation issues, that Dargon chain does a good um, way of dampening the power pulses so that it doesn't transfer the camshaft to the lifters and to the rocker arms and to the push rods start gyrating at high speeds. So that's one benefit of a chain. Therefore, uh, it's not all bad as long as you got a good quality uh, type that you bought from a world renowned, excuse me, manufacturer. So you don't have any issues of chain breaking. And I've seen them break and it's not, it's not very good. It does a lot of havoc. Usually when your chain breaks, it's gone. It's a goner. Everything would go. All right? So let's go to the next one. Now we touch on the gear drive. Single or dual? The dual gear makes more noise. <laughs> I know that for a fact. The single, oh, it's okay. But the dual is double the noise. So all those guys, I want that that like a, a busted water pump sound. <laughs> Buy a dual idler gear. Uh, you know, uh, a gear drive for your small block, Ford, Chevy, Mopar, whatever you have, whatever floats your boat. Okay, you want more noise? Dual gear. Now, they are accurate as long as again just because it says zero so forth so on check i can never say it strongly enough check your cam timing that it's of course you have to have true tdc and that it is really accurate your dampener so forth so on and your piston that you are there and you are um, really looking at tdc as it is really tdc I see some that are off two degrees or whatever. And, oh gosh, uh, when you start off wrong, uh, your everything doesn't make any sense. Okay, then you're wondering why your doggone engine is running good when it's not supposed to run good with that kind of timing. In fact, I see somebody before said their total timing best was 23 degrees total timing, and that was NA. I was going, wow. I really wonder if they have their TDC marks. And or everything even right on point because I tell you what I tried my best about combustion chamber and all that I could never I, I think the best uh, ignition uh, total lead time I got was 27 and a half 28 all right and everything was as perfect as I could get it I don't know how somebody can get 23 out of a mild street engine or high performance engine that's quite uh, remarkable but never know it can be proven wrong but here we go. Gear drive. What are the positive attributes? Cam timing is accurate. It stays on, especially when you don't have minimum slack. Okay, or end, uh, side to side, or is that a, not even end play, or lash, whatever that thing would be. Okay, if it's right on point, your timing will be the same altogether. And that's a plus. What are the negatives? Well, I could say the noise for me. I'm an old fart. I like quiet. Even if I had a blower, I don't want. That's why I like to pass them, pack them before they're quiet. And some other company had a belt drive uh, centrifugal supercharger. Oh, it's a sleeper. I don't want to announce my Vortec in my 5.0. <laughs> making that grinding sound and and hey the cover is blown oh he's got a blower listen to that no it's a gear drive <laughs> anyway here we go guys now what are the negatives remember what i said about the regular timing chain the stretch gives you a little bit more power you don't have that with a gear drive everything stays right on point so you don't have the retard uh, cam timing that's beneficial to a little bit more increase in horsepower but then again it depends how your engine's set up if you need a little bit more camshaft then the retard will probably benefit you more 
if you're also on the small side of your cam specification or cam specs. Cam retard will probably get, give you a plus. Now, if your camera is already big, big, and then you also have retard, <laughs> then you're retarded. <laughs> it's not really, uh, everything can be done too much. Okay, so uh, the gear drive will do that. Now, it depends what kind of gear drive do you have. And again, I see some that are made in balloon country and uh, they don't last. All right, and you, you'll probably see wear there and premature if the hardness and, and the material they use is really insufficient or, or below standards, watch out. So, uh, but if you like your sound of that winding or that broken water pump sound, <laughs> go have at it. All right, but if you think gear drive is going to give you more power, that timing chain beats that hands down. Okay? So there you go. Before I forget, doggone it, I almost missed that. Must be getting old. Or maybe I need to go to dinner. It's getting late. It's dark out there gear drive fi engines a lot of fi engines have knock sensors when you have a gear drive you have an issue where that harmonics might trigger the knock sensor and retard your timing okay so make sure you're aware of that it can give a false signal to your computer and your cam is retarding so you start to want to go wow what's what's going on in fact here's a little story back then uh, we were messing around with my brother's SVO this is a legit 1250 car it's a four cylinder turbo and uh, they were strong and uh, when I used to well, I did some street racing with some guys from overseas <laughs> because they said I had a V8, so I had to race them with, with my brother's SVO. And the crazy part was I used to disconnect the knock sensor because when the sensor is on there, the brackets will actually gyrate and create a harmonics and the ignition timing will spike down. Or drop down, not spike down, drop down. Because it sees this little signal. Even for a nanosecond. Alright? Now remember, many, many people said, Oh, when I heard a detonator start to misfire, I come off the gas. Well, if you're turning 8,000 RPM like we did the math earlier, 8,000 RPM is 66 ignition pulses per second. You could never be fast enough, even if you're Flash, <laughs> the Flash or Superman. <laughs> but if you lift up or lift off your gas pedal, it's too late, buddy. It's done enough damage. I don't think you could uh, prevent even 33 per second. It will happen so quickly. By the time you hear it and your brain kicks in, oop, something not right, you come off the pedal, oop, second and a half, two seconds gone by. 66, 120 or more ignition pulses or whatever or impact on the, the intake valve or exhaust valve on your piston <laughs> when it drops. It's done enough damage. Okay, so put that in mind. All right. You know, coming, coming back to that SVO. I took off the uh, knock sensor because the brackets would actually gyrate because here you are, we have, well, I, I increased the rail pressure on the injector. I put one of them adjustable turbo uh, boost, uh, well, a little bleed so that the wastegate is kind of retarded. I was getting like, oh, was that 23 pounds? <laughs> and okay, this is off topic, but I know a lot of you guys like that racing story. On the SVO, the intercooler is sitting of laying down on the hood and then you have the hood scoop in front and the intercooler is flat on its back should we say and what i did with this thing 
to run 1250. He says, we bypassed the catalytic converter, shh, California. <laughs> it actually got a little louder, like a more boomy sound. You can tell it's still a four cylinder. But the funny part was when I go street racing, I'm always walking around with this, <laughs> this igloo <laughs> with ice in it, actually half crushed and half solid ice. And I would go to the ra to the street races at like if it's like 45 degrees on down below in California. And there are days when I look at, oh, tonight's going to be the nice night. Hey, you guys want to race me? <laughs> Come by, <laughs> and then we go to the, the streets, Stadium Way or whatever, Riverside Drive. And the amazing part was, so I up the boost and everything, but when I run during the day, I try to go max boost, go, boom, 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 boom. it kind of hesitates, it's cutting out. All right, it didn't like it, but when it's very cold, here's my trip. So I'm walking around the street races with an igloo. <laughs> People are going, what's wrong with this guy? Is he retarded? He, yeah, just about, they said. Anyway, and I'll pop the hood and I'll shove crushed ice and solid ice on top of the intercooler. Remember, mind you, this is 1985, 86. I was shoving it in there. Now, as soon as I close the hood, I shove some more. Okay? And... It's packed with ice, and then my windshield washer, for my windshield washer, me, it's rerouted to the front of that hood scoop, right above the entrance. And when I hit it like this, it throws little mist on the ice and the intercooler, and it drops down and chills the intercooler very, very close. It's like just like today's race car when you put your your uh, intercooler in a well the same thing they call it igloo or right beside you on the race car now i would race five o's and other cars with this thing and i tell you what quarter mile ago 12 50 12 30 but if i race anybody even v i'd race my 85 against that with my my brother driving my 85 is a you know 1380 car i tell you what if it's a half mile i'm gone Okay, because remember, a 2.3, okay, um, turbo engine, even let's say 2 liter, let's round off. At 15 pounds of boost, that is double the displacement. That's a 4 liter engine. And you go beyond 15 pounds or 23 or whatever. Conceivably, if it's 30 pounds, now is your 2, two liter, double the displacement because of the atmosphere, with the boost of 15 pounds, it's four liter. And then again, you add another 15, 30 pounds of boost. That four liter now is an eight liter. You guys get me? So the boost, double atmosphere, is almost triple the displacement. So the two liter becomes a four liter, and that four liter becomes an eight liter. <laughs> I think that's how you, yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys get me. Okay, double the atmosphere is double the displacement. Okay, anyway, so so I would run them, and I tell you what, I, I raced some guys out there with another import against my SVO. They saw I have air conditioning on, but the AC uh, belt is disconnected, so forth and so on, and I just waxed them bad. But... If I run the first pass, it'll be very fast. The second pass, if I do a quick turnaround, it'll slow down. I have to stop and cool the intake manifold off and the intercooler. I probably have to wait about an hour or something like that on, on a cold day. This said, when I was aware that my intercooler kind of, if it gets warm, it's not as fast. This gave me <laughs> the story when I I got DQ'd with my Kaufman race car because it's a road race roll cage. I ended up running my street car, okay, in a four drags at Famoso. And I came in second place <laughs> because I was burning down some of the uh, the turbo cars, supercharged cars. 
I would sit there fiddle around with with my car just to to have them heat up because I noticed all those turbo cars, boosted cars, they would push their cars to the starting line because they don't want to build any heat. They want to keep the oil warm, okay, or hot enough to run instantaneously, but they keep in the intake track, um, should we say, um, cold, all right? So I would do my burnout, they'd do the burnout fast and all that. They'd come up to the start line stage and I'm just taking my sweet time. I'm trying to burn him down, get him out of I can see the driver looking back. Where's where's that guy at? <laughs> but anyway, so that's just a story on that intercooler thing that I was playing around with. Uh, a side subject as well, because you guys like these stories. Uh, I have a friend also, uh, when it was really not practiced then, but his uh, blow, his uh, centrifugal blower going through the intake manifold to the throttle body, that whole tube has got cooling liquid going in it. He's got a, a hidden water pump on the base of the windshield pumping water through that and uh, keeping it cool. Okay, so. Uh, it's a quick way of anything to cut down on on the heat generated by boost. Now, what was I after that little doggone story? Oh, so anyway, that's that's just uh, the oh I lost my track here. Okay, the gear drive. Just gotta make sure that one bad thing about the gear drive is that it generates a lot of power pulses and transfer that directly to the idler, directly to the top gear, and there is no chain stretching that dampens that sound. And all that gyration, transfer the camshaft to the push rods and to the rocker arms. That is a bad, bad situation. So think about those. If you're really serious about running your car with a gear drive for whatever reason okay and a lot of people probably disagree with me and that's fine um, I just just want you to think about all these harmonics introduced by a direct steel to steel either to a steel uh, uh, you know cam cam gear transferring all that gyrations straight to the push rod rock arms and everything else and when you create harmonics, that's a deadly situation. And we'll talk about that in one of these videos as well. I have a lot of stories to talk about that uh, from experience. Now we'll talk about belt drive. Again, let me throw caution in there. I have come across many engines that when I, the engine comes to me and I look at the belt drive, I'm looking at the timing, pointer on the, cam, on the adjustable cam gear or cam timing they're at zero I have done so many camshafts and so many engines I have yet maybe some of you do, do have done this I have yet to set one of those drives made in US or Australia whatever when it says zero, it's actually zero also on my camshaft and zero on the engine. It's not. Some are like two dots forward before it's actually zero. I never had them at negative, okay? So I would strongly recommend just because you see that zero on that belt drive that you think that is zero on your camshaft, it's not. No. What are the benefits? Again, like the chain, stretching, and dampening your um, power pulses, the belt is an excellent dampener. It will not transfer. I don't even think it stretches. I haven't seen any research to see if they stretch, but I doubt it, okay? So it gives you a very accurate cam timing, okay? And if you get to this, this level with 
a belt drive, more likely you got some serious stuff. All right. So maybe you don't need that chain stretch to give you a little bit more degrees on top end and give you a little bit more time. But uh, it's probably not an issue to you. Okay, because you probably have radical stuff, big lifts, big duration, all that. So everything is there in place for you to utilize every possible cam specification that's available to your cam load. Now, what else is there with the belt drive? I've seen failures when somebody tried to run a pump in front of that. So it's capable of turning a big lift camshaft, an inch, inch over an inch, 900, 800, whatever is what you need. The belt drive will function really, really good. Consist consistent, durable. So I don't think you'd really have any failures. But that one time I saw, well, that one time, it stuck with my head. A friend of mine ran some injector pumps in front of his block. All right, and whatever horsepower took that injector pump in combination with the camshaft, the belt snap or stripped, and he lost his engine. Therefore, I think if you want to run any kind of uh, drive unit in front, okay, either uh, you got an injector pump or something or, or whatever it might be, magneto, whatever, uh, Ask the manufacturer who, might, who it might be if you can safely run those. Okay, and so uh, you have no surprises coming your way. Therefore, it's a great vibration dampener for the valve train, accurate timing, light as well, and uh, accessible, very accessible when you do minor changes. You know, you should I'll go right there in front of it, we back it down a little bit and then lock down the the Allen head and torque it down and ready to run again. Okay? But always check your cam your your uh, rotor phasing. I drill a hole on top of my distributor number one and I look at my rotor and I shoot my timing line in there just to make sure it didn't really change too far or too too late or too too far forward. I, I look in there and I, and I check just to verify anytime you change that that cam timing there now the question that I know you guys would ask is that uh, what is the best timing chain out there well for many many years um, I used to buy this timing chain they're like $750 20 years ago something like that a long time ago it was very expensive and to me it's worth it because I've come across this chain and when I disassemble the engine I have one of these chains hardly any stretching drag race engines hardly anything or even street street engines I hardly have any issue with chain stretch and this is what they call high vo high vo timing set for Ford Motorsport and this is it I don't have the uh, when you look at this thing it's very sturdy from a distance it looks like a stock chain but you look at the links are very very heavy duty and look at the gear Okay, here is a stock typical gear, the high volt. All right. Now you see the difference. My well, this is Chevy, but Ford's the same way. Look at the how that is cut. You look at the gear, the timing gear, and you look at this timing gear. When you look on the inside, it's got some nasty, nasty, heavy-duty links. Okay? Because you can tell it doesn't even want to bend. That in itself being gripped, okay, by 
that and this as opposed to this and this very big difference now I don't even know this is made by Ford Motorsport it's called Hyvo H Y dash V O and from last time I hear you can still get them through Roush Yates but I think the complete set if you can find them brand new they're about five hundred dollars I think the cheapest I've found is five hundred thirty dollars or so and the rest of them are six hundred dollars a lot lower than it was seven fifty when they first came out and that's how much I was paying for them and the best part is let me see how you can tell let's see how you can tell the kind of metal they use that's some hard metal again <laughs> it's like a symbol like I'm a drummer or wanna be drummer I played in some bands before but anyway I ended up racing instead it's more fun <laughs> now um, that thing sounds like a cymbal you can hit that cymbal as hard as you can all right and it'll have that same pinging sound or ting sound and that's because the metal is very dense and very hard you do that with regular metal you probably smash it and crack it okay so this is where you're at with this doggone thing and uh, I have one right now a modified timing chain a high vol modified high vol gear and here it is Now, what are the, the advantages of having this thing? I have no idea. I haven't seen any dyno reading and um, how much it really, really gives you. Heaven knows, but anything to reduce rotational mass is always a plus in my book. Now, as far as this chain is concerned, look at this thing. Oh my gosh it is just so sturdy all right so i suggest when you guys get serious buy one of these and uh it would last you a long time all right and uh i hope that's enough information for now and i hope it helped and i think we'll go through harmonics next oh, that's also planned as far as this gyrations and all that stuff okay guys take care